हेलो एवरीवन आई होप यू ऑल आर फाइन एंड सेफ विद योर फैमिली मेंबर्स एट योर होम टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू स्टार्ट द नेक्स्ट टॉपिक ऑफ प्लांट किंगडम डेट इज ब्रायोफाइट्स आफ्टर एलगी द सेकेंड डिविजन इज ब्रायोफाइट्स and we will discuss about the characteristics of the bryophytes i have written here the bryophytes include mosses and liver worts the mosses you are aware with the mosses the mosses they generally grow on the moist and sedded places on the rocks on the tree trunk so many mosses even you can observe in the rainy season in our school campus also they are visible they are observed by our naked eye still some of the bryophytes they are present in our school campus and especially in the hilly areas like liver worts liver worts for example the scientific name of the liver wort is markensia some other bryophytes they are also grow into the moist and sedded places and these are rixia markensia as i told you pilia porella anthocyras sphagnum means bryophytes generally they are found they are present in the hilly areas because the moisture content is too much there is the humid condition also and such type of places or the climatic condition the environmental condition the bryophytes they need to grow i have written here some of the points the members of the bryophytes they are non vascular as the plants they are thylakoid in nature they are very simple they are not very advanced they are not like the tree they are very small but little bit advanced than the algae and because the whole body they are just into the contact of the substratum the base and that's why the bryophytes they don't need any type of the vascular system such as xylem and phloem the vascular system or you can say the xylem and phloem these vascular tissues are absent into the case of bryophytes but some of the vascular strain is found into the case of mosses in moss like funaria sphagnum because mosses or advanced bryophytes they are advanced than the thylakoid structure and that's why some of the vascular strains they are present to transport water and minerals from downwards to the upward and also to transport the food materials but in majority of the bryophytes the vascular system the vascular strains they are absent they are not present you can say the bryophytes the members of the bryophytes like as i told you markensia liverworts mosses sphagnum rixia all the bryophytes they are found in moist and sedded area in hills means where the moisture content is too much 
or you can say if the places having less light in intensity or having the shaded areas in the shaded area generally they grow in the plains some uh, rixia you can observe in some of the places markensia hardly you can observe but majority of the bryophytes their members are most of the bryophytes you can observe into the hilly areas and i will show you here in the school campus our school campus is well flourished with the lower plants and especially bryophytes here all the kinds of the bryophytes maximum numbers species of the bryophytes you can observe in the campus the members of the bryophytes the bryophytes they are known as amphibians of the plant kingdom it is very very important that why bryophytes they are also known as amphibians of the plant kingdom as you know amphibia is a class which includes the frogs toads etc and amphibia they can found they can live into the water as well as on the soil and that's why just like the amphibians the bryophytes they can grow into the soil as well as they also need water for the process of fertilization without water the bryophytes they do not complete their life cycle means they live on the moist soil but they also need water to complete their life cycle and especially for the process of fertilization means they need soil the bryophytes they need soil as well as water both and that's why they are also known as amphibians of the plant kingdom it's very very important question that why bryophytes are called amphibians of the plant kingdom as they need soil as well as water both that's why they are said to be amphibians of the plant kingdom the body is generally thyroid in nature which is prostrate erect and attached to the substratum with the rhizoids you can observe this diagram these two diagrams are of liver wart why <coughs> the scientific name of the liver wart is markensia why markensia is known as liver wart as the shape of the body the shape of the body of the markensia looks like <coughs> the liver and that's why markensia is also known as this bryophyte markensia this is the scientific name is also known as liver wart because liver wart is given in your ncert book liver wart and mosses we will discuss in detail also after uh, these uh, characteristics we will discuss about these two some of the bryophytes they are also known as horn wards like anthocerus not given in your ncert book and anthocerus is known as horn wart it looks just like the horn and that's why it is said to be horn wart but here the liver wart name is given because it looks like liver and that's why they are said to be liver wart and the structure of the liver wart is it is thyroid in nature you can see here the thyroid in nature means the body looks like this this is thallus here i have already drawn this is the thallus structure in the previous lesson i have been i have told you that the thallus is the body 
which is not well developed and in the thyroid body body the body is not differentiated into the root stem and leaf so this is the thallus and thallus is generally dorsiventral dorsiventral means the thallus has two surfaces the dorsal and ventral like your back is dorsal surface and your front that is the ventral surface the same like in the thallus also in the thallus of marcensia or you can say liver wart it has two surfaces dorsal and ventral and that's why it is known as dorsiventral and you can see here <coughs> actually in the case of bryophytes the true roots stems leaves these structures are absent the roots are not there but in place of the roots from the thallus some of the projections are arises and these projections just they look like the roots and these are called rhizoids rhizoids i have written here these are the right rhizoids rhizoids so rhizoids absorb water and minerals from the substratum substratum means the surface suppose the marcensia is growing on the rocks so the surface of the rock will be the substratum if the marcensia is growing on the tree trunk the tree trunk their base will be the substratum and from the substratum they absorb the water minerals and other materials from the substratum so rhizoids just absorb water and minerals the <clears throat> thallus is green in structure all the members of the bryophytes they are autotrophs they can synthesize their own food material by the process of photosynthesis they are green in structure and that's why they are autotrophs and they are able to synthesize their own food materials here i have written the thallus like body which is prostrate prostrate means it creeps on the surface sometimes the prostrate structure may be it becomes erect also may go above to the soil surface and attached to the substratum with the help of rhizoids now the next topic is uh, the next point is the main plant body is gametophyte it is very very important the main plant body of the bryophyte is gametophyte because the main plant body produces what gametes and that's why the main plant body is called gametophyte if you will take any cell from the main body the cell is haploid in nature it has a single set of the chromosome some of the plants like i will teach you pteridophytes gymnosperm angiosperms their main plant body is sporophyte means the chromosomes they are in the pair we are also diploid organism and all the diploid organism their main body is sporophyte means the chromosomes they are present in how many sets two sets but here a single set of the chromosome is there and that's why the plant body is haploid and because of the haploid plant body the whole body is also said to be what gametophyte and the gametophyte body the main plant body is gametophyte and the gametophyte body produces what gametes and these gametes are male gametes and 
female gametes the gametes are produced inside the sex organs it's very very important the male sex organ the male sex organ of the bryophyte is called anthridium and the female sex organ it is called archegonium the anthridium is produced inside the anthridiophore you can see this structure the anthridiophore is the male sex organ it is strong in shape this is the stalk and the above one this is anthridio anthridiophore and inside the anthridiophore so many anthridia are present anthridia actually anthridia is the singular for a single anthridium you can say but the group of the anthridium the plural form of the anthridium is anthridia and all these anthridia they are born they are present inside the anthridiophore this diagram has been given in your ncert book so you will not get confused this anthridiophore what is the difference between anthridia and anthridiophore the anthridia these all are the male sex organs and the anthridia or you can say anthridium they are present inside the anthridiophore so overall the male sex organ is called anthridium and the female sex organ is called archegonium and the archegonium is present where so many archegonium or you can say archegonia they are present inside this stalk like structure and this is called archegoniophore so each anthridiophore containing so many anthridia each archegoniophore containing so many archegonium and in each anthridium the male sex organs which are produced inside the anthridium it is called anthrozoites and the female sex organ that is archegonium produces the female gamete and that is called egg anthrozoites anthrozo uh, anthridio the male gametes from the male sex organ the anthrozoites are these are the so many anthrozoites are produced here anthrozoites anthrozoites and anthrozoites come inside the archegonium where egg is present anthrozoites or the male gametes each anthrozoite is biflagellated how many flagella are there two flagella are there and after fusion the diploid zygote is produced then the zygote produces zygote here i have written the zygote develops into the sporophyte zygote do not produce the main plant directly zygote first of all it produces a sporophytic plant this is the sporophytic plant and this sporophytic plant has three parts foot seta and capsule and inside the capsule so many spores they are produced by the process of meiosis division and later on each spore can produce the new gametophytic plant through the diagram once again let me to explain all the terms <coughs> uh, 
as I told you that this is the the male sex organ is called antheridium this is the male sex organ you can write here male sex organ it produces so many gametes when the antheridium ruptures the male gametes comes outside This is the female sex organ. It contains what? Archegonium. Archi. Archegonium. And archegonium contain egg. So here, the anthrozoites and egg both are fused together to form what? Jigote. As I told you, the male sex organ is called antheridium. Antheridium produces male gametes, and these male gametes are called antherozoites. Antherozoites. The female sex organ is called archegonium. So many archegonium they are produced inside the archegonium fold. But here, a single archegonium, a single anthridium, I have drawn. The archegonium contains here egg, the egg and anthrozoites. As you know, egg is non-motile. It is present inside the archegonium. But the anthrozoites, they are motile. Here, during the process of fertilization, water is required and without water the bryophytes they do not complete their life cycle why water is required you can see here from the male sex organ from the antheridium the anthrozoites finally where it comes to the female sex organ to the female thallus and they fuse with the egg to form zygote means water is required for the process of fertilization in the presence of water the anthrozoites as they are flagellated they can swim they can move from male thallus to the female thallus and finally the process of fusion or you can say fertilization takes place egg is non motile egg is not non flagellated here the male gametes they swim they go to the female thallus to lead fertilization and zygote is formed. As you know the main plant, anthrozoites, each anthrozoite is haploid in nature. The archegonium containing egg, it is also haploid. So zygote is deployed in nature. Suppose this is the thallus and here in the archegoniophore, here the zygote is for and zygote is deployed in nature. If the zygote will directly develop into the new plant, the new plant will be sporophyte. But as I told you, the main plant body of the bryophyte is gametophyte. So zygote, then the zygote develops into the a new sporophytic plant. And this new sporophytic plant has three parts capsule, seta, and this is the foot. The zygote develops into the sporophyte. This is the sporophyte plant. It has three parts foot, seta, and capsule. Capsule produces so many minute spores. And all these spores, they are haploid in nature. When the wall of capsule is ruptured, the spore comes outside and the spore can produce the new gametophytic plant. So this is all about the general characteristics of 
bryophytes once again let me to explain all these points as i told you the members of the bryophyte they are known as amphibians of the plant kingdom these are the main points the plants don't have the bryophytes don't have the vascular strain they don't have the xylem and phloem the vascular system is absent except in mosses because mosses they are slightly advanced some of the vascular strains are found bryophytes they grow into the moist and sandy as sided areas in the hills bryophytes they are mainly thylwide in nature except mosses in the moss i will teach you later on the plant body is differentiated into the rhizoids the stem like structure and the leaves mosses they are advanced a little bit but the majority of the bryophytes their body is thylwide in nature like liverworts the male sex organ as i told you it is known as anthridium and the female sex organ it is known as archegonium anthridium produces anthrozoites and archegonium produces egg anthrozoites are motile each anthrozoite is biflagellated anthrozoites comes to the egg in the presence of water here water is needed for the process of fertilization and after fertilization the zygote is formed now zygote develops into the a new sporophytic plant because zygote is diploid in nature so it forms a diploid plant and this diploid plant that is sporophyte is embedded on the gametophytic plant the sporophyte is divided into the three parts capsule seta and foot it is very very important because zygote develops this sporophytic plant and the sporophytic plant is totally dependent on the gametophytic plant it receives food material from this gametophytic plant the foot it is the basal part of the sporophyte it absorb food from the gametophytic plant then the food goes to the capsule through the seta seta transport food materials from food to the capsule and capsule is the part where after the meiotic division meiosis division so many haploid spores they are produced and when the capsule is matured the spores they are liberated outside they come outside and each spore which is haploid in nature can produce the new sporophytic Uh, sorry gametophytic plant so that's all about the characteristics of bryophytes and i request you all to note down all these points characteristics of bryophytes tomorrow we will discuss about the liver economic importance of the bryophytes then we will study we will discuss about the liverworts and mosses and differences between liverworts and mosses so that's all for today thanks thanks to everyone